Havaya Mighty, congratulations hey. on the Polaris Music Prize. Thank you so much. How are you here right now? What time did you go to bed? Uh, we were talking at what, 2 a.m.? Uh, yeah. It was yeah. crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I went to bed around 4 and then and, and got up at 7. So. Well, you don't you don't look like it. You don't look, like you, you, don't look like you slept four hours or oh, anything like good. that. That's <laughs> good. Thank you. I didn't drink anything last night because I knew this was happening. So. Oh, that's, well, that's much appreciated. Yes, you know? of course. We got a bottle of whiskey in the room for you after this. Okay. You'll be, you'll be, yes. <laughs> you'll be all right. <laughs> Listen, what went through your mind when your name was announced last night? Uh, I feel like everything went blank. I just started thinking about what I'm going to say when I get on the stage. I hadn't prepared for that moment. Um, I don't know. It kind of felt weird to try to prepare for that moment because it's a moment. It either happens or it doesn't. So there was just, I didn't know what I was going to say. So I was walking up the stairs like, whose name am I going to mention? And, you know, just kind of like overwhelmed. When did it hit you? It hasn't yet. Really? I don't think so. I don't actually think so because I haven't had a moment to like be alone, like in solitude with myself. So I don't think it's fully hit yet. Like I'm very excited and enthralled in the moment, but I think I haven't cried yet. So that that means I haven't, you know, it hasn't hit yet. Well, it's a bit of a roller coaster, right? You win it and then everyone's congratulating you, hugging you, and then you're yeah. sleeping for four hours and then you're coming on here and all that stuff, you know? Exactly. Uh, uh, let me ask this Did you have any expectations going into the show last night? I had expectations for the live performance because that's something that, you know, we did a lot of firsts last night, bringing in the band, working it in with the backing tracks as well and the choreo. Like, that was something that we really pushed for. So I had an expectation, like, for myself to really be able to nail that. So my focus was really on the performance. Out of the performance, it was like, oh, wow, and yeah, we're going to, someone's going to win. But for me, the focus was like, how's the show going to go? So it wasn't like, I'm, you didn't wake up yesterday being like, I could win this thing. My life no, could change. No, I mean, I should have probably, like, for outfit choice-wise, because I would have, like, prepped better and brought more clothing options for today and stuff. But I know I wasn't I wasn't in that mind space at all. I was really focused on the show. Well, I want to point out how, how important this is. So your record, 13th Floor, is the first rap record to win the Polaris Music Prize. Kate wow. Renata, the Montreal producer, won three years ago for his record. Uh, it was like it's sort of a blend of hip-hop and electronic music. Right. But this is the first rap album to win the Polaris Music Prize. Did you know that? I heard that last night. How does that feel? Unreal. Unreal. And 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 about time. Yeah. Yeah. I would say so. Yeah. But it, it's 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 meaningful. I think a lot of people were celebrating that, you know, just just that fact alone. It feels like yeah. you know, Canadian hip hop's come such a long way and this was another another moment for it. Right. And then on, on top of that, you know, just I guess the, the the album being a female artist, it's just kind of pushing the envelope in so many ways and and the album is very much about pushing that envelope. So feels all inclusive, you know. Let's take a listen to your phone is going crazy. Yeah, oh my right gosh. Now. I need to turn it off. It's gonna it's gonna <laughs> explode. It's gonna it's gonna <laughs> melt and catch the table on fire. Uh, I want to uh, I wanna play you a little bit of you last night on stage. Okay. I've been working on being a musician for a really long time and I've put out a lot of music with very few accolades and very little reward for a long time. And this is this is the first time that I've been able to speak my truth. My, my narrative and, and, and have an album that's based on that theme, my truth and, and how important it is and, and how dismissed it often is and how I don't, I don't care about that. I, I, this needs to come out. And the fact that after so many years, I mean, I, I've, I've, I've had the same thoughts and the same sentiment since high school and, 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 and every time it was not the time and it wasn't the place. And here now at, at the Polaris 2019, it is the time and it is the place for 13th floor to take the stage and I'm so, I'm so, 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 so grateful. This is Q, I'm Tom Power. That's a little bit of the acceptance speech from last night's Polaris Music Prize Gala. <laughs> Havaya Mighty's full-length album, 13th Floor, took home the big award. What are you hearing there? That, I don't know. Some, I, didn't know what, I didn't know what to say. I clearly I had no idea what I was trying to say or wanted to say. But I, I hear, I hear like shock and surprise in my voice and like, you know, just trying to find the words. I, I understand the importance of this moment, but like in the moment, it's like, wow, it's like, it's my moment, but it's our moment and, and it's and it's the room's moment and it's the community's moment and it's the culture's moment too. So it's just like, to kind of like feel like, you know, you're, you're at the pinnacle of that. It's just like, what can you say, you know, especially yeah. in the moment? I just had to take a second to reflect. Well, I, I think what you said was really poignant because you said something there that you also said when you came by our show last time, too, which is said, you know, this was the first time you were able to speak your truth. You had, you had waited a long time, not all through high school, you know, through, through post high school, not feeling like it was time for you to speak your truth. Right. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah. I, 
just feeling like you, your narrative has to be silenced because it is so dismissed. Um, just your personal narrative or what, what narrative? Personal, my personal narrative, yeah. The things that dictate who I am as a person and just, I think, the lack of understanding of, 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 of what comes with being... Everybody has their stories, but for me, I'm a black female. So the, what, 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 what comes with the narrative of a black female in, who is a rapper, who is dark-skinned, who has dreads in, in Canada? The, all of these factors uh, apply to that narrative and, and it's so misunderstood so there's this like level of adaptability that you have to develop you know and you go through life with this scope of 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 being malleable depending on the room that you're in because you you need to in order to to like protect yourself to 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 to, to fit in a room or be considered for an interview or you know uh, have a good customer service experience with a client because they're not you know too unfamiliar with the person they're dealing with. There's just there's these things that you learn, you know, to do as you go through your life, and those things silence you over time. And uh, I had a hard time really finding my truth through music. I'm a very outspoken person and very passionate, but then at the same time, those things kind of they take chop you down and they make you adapt. And so I've adapted in many ways with the type of music that I do, the, the content that I choose to attack, the the things that I'm willing to do on stage, the risks that I'm willing to take. That it's taken a long time to become you know, to get to the place where I don't care as much about the offset that that could have. And I've cared so much for so long and maybe I was holding myself back, but I think overcoming those feelings, overcoming that dismissal is a huge reason why this album is being recognized. And that to me is the, the 13th floor. That's what's so incredible about, you know, the title of the record and what the theme of the record is. is the so, so, so what do you say to someone who's listening right now who maybe feels like their story it's not time to tell their story they're feeling a bit silenced themselves i mean this is going to be meaningful for them yeah i i think the moment the moment is yours when you make the moment yours i mean i i obviously wasn't ready before and i obviously am now um but i think people really i mean it's obvious that people really respond to authentic authenticity and truth um and i'm still shocked by the response of it for my authenticity and my truth but it's it's very clear that that's that's where we want to go. That's where these discussions are going. That's where the climate is shifting, and it's it's your truth is only gonna relinquish you. And I would I would encourage anybody that is you know teeter tottering on that line of whether they should fully confront their truth or, or or learn what that is or not to 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 try their best to do so. How are you gonna celebrate? I'm going to Europe tomorrow. No. Yeah. Was that already planned out? Yeah, I was. I have a show in Paris, my first show in Paris, and I'm playing in London and Germany, and then back to Montreal. So, uh, no breaks. We got some more work to do. You do. And listen, um, since last night was such a blur, is anyone you want to shout out right now on the radio? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. I miss so many people. Um, so Tool Man, first of all, from a Tribe Called Red, he co-executively produced Thirteenth Floor with me. I missed his name last night. I was so annoyed, and he doesn't care, but I do. Thank you so much, Tim, for everything that you've done. Um, to make this album what it is. My management team, Vallejo Productions, Christina, uh, Troy, uh, Josh, G, Heather, uh, and the rest of the team. If I'm missing anybody, I'm so, so sorry. Um, Ola, my publicist, um, my my sister, Omega, and my other sisters, Alicia uh, and Navlet, my little brother, Negus, my mom and my dad. Everybody was there last night. My aunt, Shelly, um, Andrew, my brother-in-law and tour manager, uh, my boy, Spencer, uh, my DJ, DJ Demons uh, slash Chelsea, um, uh, and all of the producers on the record, uh, Young Dreads who was there last night as well, um, and his production contribution, my brother Mighty Prince, who produced um, Toolman, who produced myself, who produced Robotaki, who produced, um, and Claremont II and Sean Leon for joining me on the record as well. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and yeah, I'm sure I'm still missing a lot of people, but yeah, I'm sure it's like long-winded, all these names, so I'm going to stop now. But, <laughs> but so many people to thank, like it's it's endless, and like I hope if I did miss them here today that... Uh, I will get the opportunity to talk to those people. All the outlets, all the, the, the jurors, the people that voted for me, the people that were rooting for me, the music critics that took the time to actually listen to the album and, and try to understand what it was that I was trying to say. I'm so grateful for everybody that took the time to do that. You know, a lot of people are going to be listening to this album today and be quite moved by it, so congratulations. Thank you so much. Have I a mighty congratulations again. Let's hear some more music from uh, her Polaris Music Prize winning album, 13th Floor. This is 13th. 